Hello students, today the topic is packaging of DNA helix. So, we know that uh, the length of DNA is far greater than the cells where it is accommodated. And uh, we will get surprised to see that long DNA, how it gets accommodated in such a small uh, nucleus or such a small cell. And to understand, let us take some examples like uh, the human diploid cell, 2N. In human diploid cell, of course, you know that there are 46 chromosomes and every chromosome is composed of uh, histone proteins along with DNA. And uh, if we add all these uh, DNAs of all 46 chromosomes, that is what diploid cell, then what will be the length we get for that DNA? Okay, so how to calculate it? So the first, let us see, the total number of base pairs is 6.6 .6 into 10 power 9. So you'll get what base pairs. And we know that uh, the distance between two base pairs is 0 0.34 angstroms. And this angstrom is equal to 10 power minus 9 meters. So into 10 power minus 9 meters. So totally how much you get 2.2 meters the length of the human DNA in one cell is 2.2 meters. <laughs> it is far uh, longer than the cell or the nucleus. What is the size of the nucleus? The size of the nucleus is 10 power minus 6 meters. 10 power minus 6 meters. So, how this uh, DNA is packed into such a small nucleus? Okay, that we will discuss later. In the similar way, let us uh, see, take one more example, like uh, the length of DNA in E. coli, Escherichia coli bacterium, and the cell size is 1 micrometer. And let us see now, uh, what is the length of that DNA? The length of DNA can be calculated like this, 4.6 into 10 power 6 base pairs into 0 0.34 angstroms into 10 power minus 9 meters. Then we will get 1.52 millimeters and what is the size of uh, the cell here? 1 micrometer. In that 1 micrometer cell, this 1.52 millimeter long DNA should be accommodated. And how it is accommodated? That we are going to see and this is called uh, packaging of DNA helix. Okay, now uh, let us see how this DNA is packed in prokaryotes. Let us take uh, a typical bacterial cell. And this is the cell. And you will find this single DNA, I mean there is only one main DNA and that main DNA is double standard. Double standard that is DS and it is circular DNA and it is called naked DNA 
because of the absence of uh, nuclear membrane and it is coiled DNA but it, instead of uh, just simply using coiled it is better to use it is not simply coiled it is super coiled super coiled means many times it is coiled why many times it is coiled to get accommodated into such a small cell and let us say whether this uh, DNA will occupy the entire cell or not okay you just say and I am showing the DNA which is super coiled here Such a long DNA is not occupying the entire cell and uh, it is uh, okay, confined to a small portion within that small cell. This is uh, uh, became possible due to super coiling and the coils are maintained by basic non-histone proteins. Basic non-histone proteins. called polyamines. What polyamines are doing? They are uh, okay, giving stability to the coils. And this DNA which is packed like this is called nucleoid. Nucleoid or genophore. Genophore, not genome. Genome is all genetic constitution present in a haploid chromosomes, haploid set of chromosomes is called genome that you will find in okay eukaryotes. But here uh, there is only one DNA. And one more point you have to understand that these are non histone proteins, and because histone proteins are absent in prokaryotes. So, in this way, this DNA is packed in uh, prokaryotes. So, I hope you are understanding that uh, the DNA is in prokaryotic cell, never scattered throughout the cytoplasm it is confined to a place and the place where this packed dna is present is called what nucleoid or genophore now let us see dna packaging in eukaryotes so in eukaryotes so this packaging is somewhat complicated one because uh, it is not simply DNA that is packed along with DNA you will find histone proteins plus non-histone proteins and also little amount of RNA. But the major uh, things are about DNA and histone proteins and these uh, histone proteins are of five types H1, H2A, H2B, H3, H3, and H4, 5 types, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and these histone proteins are uh, 
specially composed of uh, two amino acids in their rich in lysine and arginine lysine and arginine lysine and and among these uh, five histone proteins h2a there is two molecules of h2a and two molecules of h2b two molecules of h3 and two molecules of h4 together form a spherical structure together form a spherical structure called octomer or new body not n e w n u new body so why is this is called octomer because it is uh, composed of how many molecules eight molecules and you may be wonder that uh, there are only four molecules not uh, like that so this is let us say h2a so one is uh, facing us and behind that one more molecule of h2a will be there like that let us say this is h2b okay one here one behind h3 and h4 this is called octomer and these uh, histone proteins are uh, positively charged and uh, the dna is negatively charged so the dna is wrapped wrapped around this one like this wrapped making uh, One three by four turns. One three by four turns. And this one three by four turns will have two hundred base pairs. And now uh, to stabilize this wrapping, so you will find one uh, uh, histone protein here. and this is h1 protein but h1 is not uh, a part of octamer okay and uh, now this uh, octamer uh, okay along with dna is called nucleosome nucleosome octamer along with okay dna is called what nucleus and now suppose uh, uh, if the question is asked like this how many histone proteins are present in nucleus then uh, what you have to say five types because uh, h1 is also there but uh, suppose if uh, the question comes how many histone proteins will make up the one then uh, what you have to say four types okay so and this is uh, one nucleosome and i see several such octamers you will find here let us make okay so this is one nucleosome this is another second one third one fourth one fifth one like this and in between uh, uh, the nucleosomes they are uh, uh, exactly spaced and uh, this dna present in between the two nucleosomes is called uh, internucleosomal dna internucleosomal dna or linker dna 
ลิงเกอร์ดีเอ็นเอ and this linked DNA is composed of 80 base pairs. So at every place, the linked DNA is present between the two uh, successive nucleotide nucleosomes, and uh, this linked DNA will is composed of how many base pairs? 80 base pairs. Okay. Now. Okay, students. Uh, now uh, I hope uh, you know about the cell division. And during cell division, so you will find uh, uh, some change that happens within uh, the chromatin material. So in the interface, you will find chromatin material, and that chromatin material, okay, gradually undergoes condensation or spiralization. To form chromosome, and uh, you have already studied that uh, the chromosomes clearly, okay, can be seen during metaphase and also anaphase. But how were uh, they become such clear structures during uh, metaphase and anaphase? This is all because of uh, the spiralization or condensation. And let us say, actually, before uh, uh, condensation, how they exist? They exist in the form of chromatin material. And in the chromatin material, you will find uh, only nucleosomal threads. And the, that means during interface, you will find what uh, if, if they look like uh, a chain of beads or beaded chain. And I hope you know that when they are coiling, what happens, you tell me? The thickness will increase or decreases? The thickness will go on increase. That's for, for understanding, I do one diagram on the board. You see, this is the DNA. And we know that uh, the width of DNA or the diameter of DNA is 20 angstroms or 2 nanometers. Okay. Such DNA is uh, wrapped around uh, many octomers forming nucleosomes, a nucleosomal chain. And you see, the nucleosomal chain is uh, having uh, how much uh, uh, width? 10 nm width. That means because of the association of DNA with the octomers, the width increased from 2 nm to 10 nm. Now, this nucleosomal one will start coiling. Okay, and you see, you can see that they are coiled. And this structure is called solenoid. And because of this coiling, you see, you can see that width further increased. So it became about 30 nm width. And now it is further coiled resulting in this structure and this is called super solenoid and uh, from 30 nm it has increased to what 300 nm and uh, it is not stopped here it continued and as a result of which a structure is formed that is called chromatid chromatid and uh, the thickness of this chromatid is 700 and but we know that th this is one DNA and one chromatid is formed and you know that in metaphase the chromosome we have two chromatids which are identical chromatids so one more chromatid when it comes and joins here and they are uh, temporarily attached at one particular region which is called uh, syntomia or primary constriction. Don't forget that uh, these two chromatids are never okay, connected permanently. They are temporarily connected at uh, that particular region called syntomia. And uh, suppose if I bring one more chromatid here, 
then these two which are attached at this centromere region will make uh, what chromosome metaphase chromosome means the chromosome that appears during metaphase will have how many chromatids two chromatids so one chromatid is having uh, what width uh, 700 and up. so this metaphase chromosome will have what uh, width or what diameter okay 1400 and okay in that way the chromosomes are formed and they are packed in that uh, nucleus but uh, don't forget that the chromosomes are formed only at the time of uh, cell division and when cell is not dividing the chromosomes will be in the form of chromatin material and this chromatin material chromatin material in a permanent cell or non dividing cell you find only chromatin material so the chromatin material will organize into definite uh, shaped chromosomes only at the time of cell division you have to note down this point and this chromatin material can be stained by basic stains. What are those basic stains? Acetocaramine, acetoarsin, or fulgin. Okay, it doesn't mean that we have to use all these three, you can use any of these three. And uh, the chromatin material, when it is stained, will show us two regions in the nucleus. One is uh, deeply stained and that is called heterochromatic and one is lightly stained and that is called euchromatic and this is deeply stained because uh, it is tightly coiled chromatin tightly coiled whereas this euchromatin is lightly stained because it is loosely coiled. That's why this heterochromatin is uh, do not undergo transcription. Means what uh, mRNA is not formed. So it is genetically inactive region. Whereas euchromatin is having uh, uh, okay, loose coils and uh, which will help in transcription and that's why this euchromatin is genetically active region. And remember that uh, this uh, uh, kind of uh, differential staining is called heteropycnosis. Heteropycnosis. Means what chromatin material is one, but uh, when we are staining it, we are not getting uniform color, we are getting what two different colors one dark color and one light color, and that phenomenon is called what heteropycnosis. So, in this way. Okay, the DNA is packed in eukaryotes. So next.